Today on The Spirit Contemporary Life, I found out that most people don't know how to use their faith and they don't know what to believe God for. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. You've probably heard me talk a lot about the spirit contemporary life, which is about what the Christian life should look like as a believer in today's world. Through this TV program, I want to show you that the spirit contemporary life can be one filled with love, peace, joy, prosperity, healing, and so much more. In John 10, 10, it says Jesus came so you could have life and have it to the full. I truly believe that God's got a special plan for each and every person watching today. You've got a unique gifting, a calling on your life. If you can learn to be fully connected to the Spirit of God and be relevant, be cool, be contemporary, you'll be so effective then in impacting others for the kingdom. You can experience the spirit contemporary life. So listen closely, take some notes as we get into today's message. Hey, it's so good to have you with me today. We are on a very crucial topic. You know, we often hear about use your faith, believe God. I found out that most people don't know how to use their faith and they don't know what to believe God for. For example, they'll, they'll say, well, I am believing God for a miracle. Well, that's not exact enough because what happens when you believe God for a miracle, I say, well, then what do you believe? Well, you've got to believe that God can heal. No, everybody believes that if there is a God, he'd heal. The devil believes God heals. So what is it that we believe? Well, I'm believing God for a healing in my body, okay? So how do you do that? Because really, the Bible says in, in Romans that faith cometh by hearing the word, understanding the word. And so to just believe I'm going to get a miracle, most have tried that and very, very few, some kind of you know, miraculously, serendipitously get a, the odd miracle through that way. But if you want to know how to consistently believe, how do you use your faith for a consistent release of miracles? You need to believe. And I did another message that where you need to believe that your sin is dealt with, all of your faults, all of your failures, all of your sin. If you don't believe as a failures and sin as a Christian, failures and sin as an unbeliever, that those are dealt with and gone and should not keep your heart condemned because you cannot get a miracle if your heart is condemning you. And the Bible says very clearly, we talked about this already, that the truth will establish your heart in grace, in righteousness. All right, today I want to show you uh, something in the Word of God that I believe is crucial for you to believe. All right, you've got to believe that you are righteous, that you are in right standing with God. God. This is something so many Christians don't believe. In most places, I'll ask this question if I'm teaching on this topic. I'll have a huge auditorium and I'll say, how many here are righteous? And no one puts up their hand. You can see a few people who know the word, they'll kind of go like this and look around as though they're being proud or they're being arrogant. But you must establish in your heart and know beyond a boat, any shadow of a doubt, I'm righteous. Period, I'm righteous. I'm not saying I'm sin free. I'm not saying I am perfect in behavior. I am saying I know my place as established in righteousness. You need to understand, Satan has no authority. Someone said to me, well, you know, you gotta be careful because if you can get into sin, Satan has the authority 
to walk into your life. No, the Bible says he has no authority. Jesus says, I have all authority. Jesus is not going to give the devil authority over you. Now, you might give the devil an opportunity. The Bible says that in the epistles. For example, you just decide arrogantly you're going to disobey traffic lights and go through any red light you want. But when the car hits you coming the other way because they've got the green and you're running the red, and you go, <clears throat> wow, this is why did God allow this? No, no, no. You gave the enemy an opportunity, but not the right. So we've got to understand the word of God. Because when you do, when truth begins to come in, it's easy to walk in the power of God, the blessing of God, the favor of God. And when needed, the miraculous power of God. Because all Satan will do is attack your righteousness and your own heart will condemn you because you haven't established your heart in grace. You know, in Luke chapter 2, verse 13 to 15, it says, Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared for, with the angel, praising God and saying, uh, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men, on whom his favor rests. They're not talking about peace amongst men. We've got more wars going on now than we ever have. This is peace to men, and on whom his favor rests rests. It's one thing for you to be the teacher's favorite. You know, I never was, but some of the people I grew up with in school, they, they just knew how to be the teacher's favorite. And sometimes teachers would have a different favorite pupil every week. But did you know the favor of God rests on me? The favor of God rests on you? It's never taken away. Never. And it promises it right here, that there's going to be peace to men on whom his favor rests. Well, favor means you're his favorite. A favor is something you do for somebody uh, for no reason. They didn't earn it. You're just giving them a favor. The Bible teaches us in Deuteronomy 6, 24 to 25, it says here, the Lord commanded, now this is the Old Testament. The way you were righteous in the Old Testament was by you keeping the law. So here's what it says. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we might always prosper and be kept alive, as is the case today. And if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us, that will be our righteousness. What is their righteousness? Obeying all the law. Now, that is their right. Now, the reason they wanted to be righteous was because when you were righteous, you always had access to his power, his protection, his prosperity, his healing, his deliverance was always yours. But when we get out of his righteousness and we stop being righteous, that is when we get into trouble. Now, when you look into God's word, um, let's go to Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 to 9. This is the Apostle Paul teaching. So in the Old Testament, your righteousness was your behavior. Then you were righteous and God's favor is always on righteousness. Here's what it says. Paul in Philippians 3, 7. But, what was ever, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness that comes from God, it is by faith. All right. So here is what I'm talking about. What do you believe for with your faith? Paul believed that through Jesus, he was righteous and that it was a gift. That he, so for you to walk in the miraculous on a regular basis, you must believe, I'm righteous because of Jesus. I'm righteous because of Jesus. And as you believe that and establish that, that is when easily God's grace what is God's grace? It's his favor 
A favor is always something that is unearned. When you begin to believe, now a lot of people up to now have just used their faith to believe that God's going to heal them and they try all these things to believe that God's going to heal them. And then <clears throat> what was going on in their heart was Satan was attacking their righteousness by saying things like, well, you had an abortion when you were a young girl, or you, know, you committed adultery when you were a young man, or you've been viewing pornography, or you have been out doing, and, and you've fallen into sin here. You made a mistake there. And he continues to try to make you slide back into the righteousness that had to be earned in the Old Testament. Now, it's wisdom to get out of sin because sin hurts you. But don't ever think that you getting out of sin is when you're going to get healed, is when you're going to become righteous. Because then you go back into earning your righteousness, which is you being self-righteous. When you are self-righteous, you begin to, um, I've lived my life proper, I'm doing really good, and I'm righteous, and I deserve. You don't deserve anything. We must believe today in the new covenant. We must believe that I'm righteous because of Jesus. And this peace settles on you. It literally causes you and your heart to be at peace. And then God's favor rests on you. As it said there when Jesus was born, uh, it says that peace towards men on whom his favor rests. This is what we must believe. In fact, I would confess that if I was you every day, that peace is in my heart and God's favor rests on me. I walk in his blessing every day of my life. Everywhere I go, good things come towards me. I'm at peace with all my enemies. The blessing of God's upon me financially, physically. My heart is at peace with God. These things confess. Believe that you're righteous. This is crucial. If you don't believe you're righteous, you're not going to be able to believe God that you're healed. You're not going to be able to believe God that you're prosperous. You're not going to begin to be able to believe God for a child's healing. You're not going to be able to believe God for your any of it. Why? Because all Satan will do is attack your righteousness and your own heart will condemn you because you haven't established your heart in grace. Your heart must be established in this new covenant. It must be established so that you're at peace. When your heart is at peace with God, that is when you receive from him everything you're believing for. And so he's trying. The enemy will whisper things into your mind from the past. might be yesterday even, but he's going to whisper things in your mind. You've done this. You've allowed that. And in doing that, he's trying to make you die young. He wants to kill you, steal from you, steal your spouse, steal your kids, steal your health, steal your grandkids, steal your finances, steal your peace, steal your joy. And when your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. We found out in our last lesson. Let the word of God bring this peace to your heart. Now, I'm going to say something that might offend someone, but if you're going to a church or you're listening to mad, angry preachers who are always preaching against sin and that sin is going to cost you and that God is judging Haiti, he's judging America, tornadoes come because of God's judgment, earthquakes come because of God's judgment, etc., etc., etc. You have to ask yourself, did Jesus die for the sin of the world? And if he did, yes. Didn't he take the curse that went with that sin? Yes. Didn't he take the punishment for everybody's sin in the world? Yes. So basically every person on the planet has been forgiven. But until they believe on Jesus, what was done 2,000 years ago profits them nothing. To believe on Jesus and accept his free gift that's already been done they can't have, they can't walk in that forgiveness. Because you are a free will being, you have to make that choice. God will never violate your free will. He won't force you to accept him. You must make that choice. But oh, it's amazing when you do. The peace and the flow of God's power that flows in your life. I was saying earlier that the presence of God on the inside of you, it continues to ignite your body with life. Getting, needing a miracle of healing and getting it is not God's best. No, no. Walking in health 
is God's best. Right now, needing a miracle to pay your bills, that's not God's best. He'll do the miracle. He wants you to walk in such a place of prosperity that you're giving to every good cause He directs you to, that you're giving 90% to your church, living off of 10%, and that 10% you're living off of is phenomenally blessed and allowing you to do whatever you want. In other words, when you get a revelation of the presence of God is prospering you, healing you, bringing peace to you regularly, that his righteousness is always with you. And so you have favor everywhere you go. Beautiful things are attracted to you. Evil things are repelled from you, that the angels are unleashed. You know, the Bible, the angels know the word of God. They know that God wants you protected, but you have to believe that from the heart. And if Satan can get into your heart where you feel condemned, then you can't really believe for God's promises if you don't believe that you're righteous because of Jesus. If you don't believe that all, none of your sins can stop the blessing of God. If you don't believe that his favor is on you and never leaves you, if you don't believe that his peace is there, these things that I'm teaching you are crucial. These are the foundation of faith. This is where you need to spend time. Take these scriptures, write them down, and make sure that you get this. Now, going on in Romans chapter 10, verses 1 to 13, it teaches us about righteousness. One of the verses here, it says, Christ is the culmination of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Did you know that your righteousness is a faith? righteousness. It's not a works righteousness. That's the two kinds of righteousness that are on the planet today. One is you working it out yourself. And here is where Christians get into trouble. They start believing that I've done all these good things, God's going to heal me. Or God, I'll make a deal with you. I'll give all that I have to the poor. I'll go door to door and hand out tracts if you heal my daughter. See, that's trying to earn a miracle. It's way simpler than that. The Bible teaches us that Christ is the culmination of the law. In other words, Jesus kept all of the commandments for you. And because we are in Christ, then it's Christ's track record that you're relying on. And by the way, he was perfect. Someone, someone says, well, Leon, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. That's an Old Testament verse. When I first read it, I went, well, I guess I can't claim that because I certainly haven't been perfect in my behavior. Then I go, well, just a minute. It's not my behavior. It's Christ's behavior. And so I took that verse through the cross and I said, Father, I thank you that no good thing will you withhold from me because Jesus walked uprightly in my place, qualified me. I died with him. He took my punishment. I, I am righteous because of Jesus. So there's no, no good thing are you going to withhold from me. I'm blessed in every area. I love speaking out loud the word of God, declaring my faith. Most of what is hurting people today is they are not confessing and believing their identity in Christ. The benefits that Jesus won them. Before you get into healing, prosperity, uh, protection, and all the promises of God, faith needs to establish in your heart that you're completely forgiven, that you are righteous, that his favor rests on you, never leaves you that nothing negative is allowed in your life, that every time something that pushes against you, God's always on your side coming against it. If you don't believe that, then you will find yourself always caught in the middle of a situation. I often will go into hospitals and pray with people who've been from other churches, raised up in other doctrines, and I'll try to spend some time with them, teaching them the word, showing them that they're righteous. And it's amazing to me, their eyes get big. Oh, I'm not righteous. I know I'm not righteous. I said, no, no, you're not perfect. You know you're not perfect. That's what I mean, right. But the word righteous doesn't mean perfect. It means, are you right with God? And they go, well, I've accepted Jesus. Okay, fine. Then you need to recognize that that's what makes you in right standing with God. And that is usually the crux where I find I can get them to begin to be healed, walk in prosperity and blessing, will be if they believe they are righteous. But, me, but many of them who've been so steeped in it, they have to literally work every day. Like many of you watching me today, if you've been steeped in you know, uh, a, a sin preaching where 
TV preachers and pastors have just been preaching against sin and preaching against sin and, and the wages of sin is death and you're going to go to hell or, or as a Christian, the devil's got the right to come into your life. And they've tried to think of all these ways to get their congregations to stop sinning by just preaching against sin. And all that happens is it actually spreads. And the people who fall into sin stop coming to church because they know they can't stop their uh, addictions. They can't stop their sins. But when you preach God's grace that Jesus not only is forgiven you and made you righteous, but his power is available to you now for you to stop any sin you want. His power helps you live a moral, healthy, beautiful, wonderful life. It's not just that you are blessed in spite of your sin. He also gives you the power to be, have, be victorious over every addiction, over every sin, over all of the fear, all of the lies. I want to challenge you today to start believing what you heard here. I want you to get a hold of great teaching like this. Keep following us. Don't miss this. You know, tape this. Get a hold of great resources like I'm teaching you as to what to believe. Believe you're righteous. Believe none of your sin can compromise God's blessing upon your life. Believe that, you know, that the favor of God rests on you. Believe that God's grace is on your life. These are the crucial things to believe. There's lots of more wonderful things, but these are the crucial ones. All right, I'll, I'll, let's stop there, and then I want to pray with you. I'm going to pray with you right now that if you need a miracle in your family, you need a miracle in your business, have you been believing for God to restore your almost bankrupt, you've been barely paying your bills, you're believing for prosperity and blessing, have you been believing for a healing in your body? Maybe right now, your body has got pain. Maybe it's disease, rheumatoid arthritis. Maybe it's heart disease. Maybe there's a dementia pushing against you and you know what you keep dropping your thoughts and it's scaring you. Did you know that God's desire is that you walk in health? And Jesus took dementia, every disease, everything that would hurt you. He took it on the cross. It's a part of the curse. And you don't have to have it. But you've got to believe that Jesus qualified you. You've got to believe that you are righteous as a Christian. You've got to believe that his favor rests on you. You need to believe that his power is within you and it's radiating into your body, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. As I've been preaching today, your faith has risen. Stop thinking, well, I don't know. Stop. You're qualified. Father, in Jesus' name, I speak healing into that physical body. Body, you be whole. Thank you that it's a free gift. Father, I pray things are going to change in their finances. Bring opportunity. Bring in finance. Do something, Father, with people. Bring, give them favor in their jobs, their business. Do something miraculous, Father, in their finances because they're children of yours, blessed and protected. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the miracles erupt in the people's lives that are watching right now. In Jesus' name, amen. The spirit contemporary life means that you live an empowered life, one that connects your day-to-day -day existence with God's supernatural power. As Christians, we're to be the shining light in the world we live in. We are to stand out in our workplace as great employees, bosses, CEOs. Our relationships should flourish. Christians should and can be the best of the best. If this sounds good to you, and I encourage you to study your Bible and see what it really says about the Christian life. All of us need to start with our identity rooted in the Word. By practicing generosity, you're not only enriching your own life and putting action to your faith, but you're also changing the lives of others, those who need to hear about the saving grace of Jesus. Father, I pray right now the power of God flowing in their life. I thank you that, Father, we don't are not governed by fear. I pray that you put on the heart of every person listening. Father, to partner with us, that together we can win souls for Jesus, bring healing and, and miracles to the masses around this planet. Father, touch them deeply with a sense of what they can do to bring this message to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. 
all over the world, there are people who have not yet heard about the love of Christ, people who desperately need it. We all have an important part to play in sharing this message. God's given us this beautiful life to enjoy, but while you are living it, be very aware that the message you know that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Reaching people with the gospel is the very heartbeat of this ministry. This is why we work so diligently to make our programs relevant and contemporary, translating hundreds of materials into French, Spanish, Mandarin, Russian, Farsi, and many more. Because of the generosity of partners like you, our programs have been able to reach millions, not only here at home, but also in South America, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. There is still so much work to do. We will not stand by idly because people's eternity lie in the balance. We need to act now. People need to hear about the love of Jesus and His amazing grace today. Together, we will share Jesus in a spirit contemporary way. And together, we will see miracles.